Welcome to Kyra Awesome Insights. I'm with Abby Macy, and this is an incredible, it's a really exciting opportunity opportunity for me to speak to somebody who I know is a powerful and passionate advocate for health and well-being. She's the author of the breakthrough book, Passionate Wellness, Simple Tips to Transform Your Health and Create a Balanced Life. This book, I think, is an important book because of the, the role it has in inspiring women to awaken their mind, body, and soul for radiant health, both inside and out. But transcending that area or that genre of writing, you're also the author of Paulina, The Picky Princess, and The Magic Garden, which I know that you're such an advocate of total body and total family health as well. A certified integrated nutrition health coach, passionate about creating clean and natural products. You also create personalized coaching programs to transform people's health and quality of life. Abby, it's fantastic to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, look, I'm actually really excited because I know that you are, and again, passionate wellness is the title of the book, but it is really also a defining aspect of, of who you are and what it is that you do. So tell me a little bit about the book and about your passion for health and well-being. Um, well, I'm a mom of four girls, so I've been evolving as they've been growing, and um, having a healthy lifestyle is really important to me to um, instill those values into my children to see that, you know, just because high school's over, sports and athletics is over, that doesn't mean you stop exercising. That's something that becomes a way of life. Um, the way what you eat fuels your soul and how you feel, you know, fuels what you eat um, and how what you eat is connected to your skin. Your skin is kind of a window to what's going on inside your body. So it's, it's, it's really a mind, body, skin, soul approach that I, that drove me to write the book. Just simple ways to incorporate different aspects of your life in a healthy way. Um, I look at primary foods being your relationships, career, spiritual practice, and exercise. When those are in balance, then what you put on your plate, your secondary food, the physical food, is more in balance. So it's kind of writing the book from that approach, really kind of diving deep into how can you, you know, add more self-care? How can you buy more local food, grow more local food, um, support the local farmer to understand what type of food, you know, is, you know, the best for your body. And not everyone is the same. So I kind of talk about different diets in there um, because there's not a one size fits all diet. So you kind of have to listen to your body, listen and look at what your skin is doing um, to, to know what it's telling you. Because I talk about that in the book as well. There's different areas on your face that correlate with different organ systems in the body um, and hormones, you know, where that shows up on the skin. So it's, it's really kind of taking all those aspects, I guess, and putting it together. But I really I had all this information inside me and been doing years and years of research and writing a book was just something that I was passionate about. And it goes hand in hand with my health coaching because we, we create a program for my clients on a bio-individual level. And this is something that we use the book as part of the program. Um, to help them integrate different steps. There's notes at the end of each chapter so people can, you know, kind of write it down what they want to review or whatever. Um, and then there's also a food journal a little bit in the back of the book so you can write down because I think it's really important is when someone's on a wellness journey to understand what they're eating and how they're feeling. Are they tired? Are they getting enough sleep? Are they drink drinking enough water? All these things go hand in hand in wellness. So. That's amazing. That, uh, there's several things about that that I really just want to highlight that represents that oftentimes a, a bit of a departure from what people commonly present out, present their material as. You know, you've, you've started with the principle of not purely writing a book about a change your diet, change your lifestyle process. It's about let's look at a higher level from a higher, a higher perspective about who you are, the meaningful parts of your life. You said there's a second table. It's what you put down. The second table is the food that you put down there. So. How did you evolve that understanding where you were going to move, come from a higher level of thinking rather than beginning at a nutritional level, change your diet, begin at a higher level of awareness and understanding? Because I think that's something that is missing in so many books. So I'd love your insights and how that evolved, how you began that process in practice and in your coaching programs, even before you brought that into the book. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it did come from a lot of hearing what my clients were saying one of the first things I ask them when we sit down on our first session is tell me about the different diets that you've tried, what's worked and what hasn't. 
Most of them come to me because they want to lose weight, but there is so much more that goes into their wellness than just the food that they're eating and the so-called diet that they're on. So we really tackle, um, like I said, the primary foods first. If you have a job that you can't stand, but you can't leave, how can we make it better for you? You know, that also goes into food and how they're eating throughout the day, because if they're feeling upset or, you know, they're not getting along with a coworker, just having that more peace at work, it helps them like eat a healthier lunch, not have a go to the vending machine and get an unhealthy snack. So we talk about bringing healthy snacks. Um, we, we try to dive into what foods do they notice that they feel more energized on? And, and are there foods that they notice their skin's breaking out or they kind of are feeling lethargic? Um, we, um, you know, relationships as well. I mean, if I, I talk about if you go out on a first date and you come home and it was amazing, you're not going to sit down on the couch with a pint of ice cream. Typically, you won't. Typically, you won't. Um, you know, you might be just so full of excitement. It's just food's not even a thought. So we really try to create a different mindset around it um, to try to make it, these things connect to the food that they're putting on their plate so that they can look at it as a healthy, like small sustainable steps to get them to that healthy lifestyle for longevity. So I don't want to, we, we really dive into what foods they like. You know, if they start with a, um, a donut in the morning, we say, well, what can we do to crowd that out? Could you start with a banana and then have the donut? You know, and, and kind of maybe you won't eat the whole donut. And so it's just a kind of a process because, you know, we talk about how this way of eating for them or their, the way they feel about food has probably been going on for years. Mm -hmm. You know, lots of people do the yo-yo dieting and whatnot. And so we try to create small, sustainable steps that don't make it feel like a challenge and help rewire their neurons in their brains to think differently about the food um, and create new pathways of thought um, around what to eat and not feeling deprived. I had a client that said that every time she went out to eat, she felt like she absolutely had to have the pasta because she felt like she was depriving herself. So it took us talking about picking, looking at the menu before you go, committing to a healthier option so that you don't get pulled when the waitress comes up and just, oh, I'll have the pasta, you know? So there's just so much more that goes into it than a diet. It's about the mindset, um, you know, that I think really plays a strong role in it. Yes. I, I love that, that way of thinking because I, I, can, I can hear in the words, you're one, you're passionate about this. And two, there's a higher level of thinking and awareness, not just the mindset that goes with it, but the awareness that you're recognizing that you've had this you go having a great day and you don't need to come back and emotionally eat. So you're recognizing that there's a link between the foods that we choose and the events of our life. And if we are clear on how we can factor our decision-making to influence our events, we're going to have an awareness of the foods that we choose to eat. And so you, instead of being purely prescriptive, you're actually becoming an educator and uh, an equipper and an empowerer in this life change process, which brings wellness and therefore healing into people's lives. So I think that distinction is really important because a lot of practitioners can get very prescriptive, follow this diet, do this process. And right. It doesn't always help, does it? Sometimes it can lead to frustration because they can't do what they need to do because the other areas, the other tables haven't been set properly, properly in their life. So that's a really important distinction. Mm-hmm. Love that. So you've been, you, you're, you're a health coach, you're, you're doing integrated nutrition and you're, you know, you're working with people. So you're having these conversations. What inspired you then to take the work that you're doing and put it into a book format? You've obviously had these conversations and when was that transition point to saying, okay. Um, I, I, think it, I think it was about a year into my practice of working with clients. Um, I just kind of was hearing the same things over and over again you know, they, they wanted me to put them on a nutrition plan because that's what they've been taught to do, to lose the weight and keep the weight off. But when we talk about, well, you've tried all these diets and nothing has, you know, helped you do that. And so I wanted to kind of create a roadmap, I guess, you know, for people to, you know, I have clients that have come back and done this, their six month programs and they've come back again and again, continuing on because they just like that accountability. Um, but I also again, as a roadmap for them to continue and kind of go back to what were the core foundations of our program of what we talked about 
to get inspired and maybe you'll read it and you'll take away something different. Look at your notes from what you've written down before. Um, another thing I do give my clients is the food journal so that they can, you know, cause I notice that people will um, say, Oh, I, I ate so good yesterday. Well, tell me what you ate. Um, well, I think, I, well, yeah, I had a muffin for breakfast, you know, so you, it's kind of hard to recall that. But then when they're connecting to how they're feeling, you know, that really helps them understand, oh, that morning I woke up, I didn't sleep that well the night before, and I just ravaged the, the refrigerator, or, you know, pantry. Um, so again, it, it's just a roadmap, a guide, kind of um, to help them go back. And I wanted, to, I wanted to provide that for my clients. I, I felt like it would take the health coaching to another level writing the book. It was really, really important to me to do that. That's great. And again, not only a roadmap, but also a feedback tool, because when you have the opportunity to reflect on what you're doing, you're learning as well as growing through utilization. Book. You've got the clarity that the roadmap provides, but you've got the opportunity to reflect on your actions based on the way that you've woven um, that, that food journal into the process as well. So again, equipping and empowering is, is this something that you do so profoundly well. Thank you. With the, with the book, it's, and obviously you now, do you, how do you use this within your practice? So a, a client contacts you, does it, is it through the book that they may contact you first? Because it's, obviously it's available um, on many different platforms, but also you could use that when they come into you if they've you know, sort, sort of by other avenues. So how does the book weave into either as a lead issue or as a process where you then redirect them with the roadmap? So I was a wellness um, in a chiropractic wellness center and that's, I was their health coach in there. Um, when they come for their initial consultation, they fill out an intake form and they check like different areas of their life that they may be needing support in and whether they want to talk to the health coach or not. So that's kind of where I started and where the book became something that we sat down after they signed in for the program that I gave them before the next session, our first session. Cause I usually do a discovery session with them, kind of go over their health history and their past and their concerns and their goals. Um, so it's kind of an in-between the first session and kind of here's what you'll get in the program. So that's where it came into play and it, it just has kind of continued on. I'm, um, I'm also an advanced skin sequencing practitioner because Skin wellness is very important to me. And so I, you know, sell the book at farmer's markets. Um, tomorrow I'll be at a farmer's market, um, with my skincare line that I've developed. Um, so it kind of has different roles. It's, it's something that people come and see, they see about skincare and they're like, oh, oh, you do a little bit more than just skincare. There's all about wellness. And, and so it's, it's, it's got a lot of different levels that way. Um, but a lot of word of mouth from doctors who um, I even had a financial planner who asked me if he could include their book in a like a little welcome basket that they give people that come to the neighborhood when they move in because they thought well it's taking financial wellness to a whole you know another aspect he was trying to also be integrative in the way of thinking about your finances how do you stay well so you know you're staying on top of your finances and you're protecting yourself should you not be well so um, there's a lot of different avenues to get the book out there and how I in integrate it into the coaching. And That's so. incredible. I, lo I love the way in, uh, that you've brought that to clarity there. So let me see if I've got this, this understanding really clear about that. Within the practice, a, a client comes into the practice, they get to work with you to improve their health and quality of life to support the care that they're receiving. And so the book becomes their roadmap and also their feedback tool about the progress they're making. In it, so they get to that they've come in to see you, but they get the support through the book, magnifying the effectiveness of the work that you get to do with them. On top of that, you get to use the book outside of the practice as ways of introducing your your your, your services, sharing your message, and then and also reaching out to the community in a more effective way. So it has this broad scope of impact to be able to grow your practice, impact people's lives, and direct care. Would that be a reasonable summary of the part of the way you're using it? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Oh, I love that. That's fantastic. And something I'd also like to just reflect on when what's the, you give the book to these people or people receive this book in some type of outreach activity. What type of stories do you get from people who, you know, immerse themselves in this book? So writing a book is one thing we, we hear, as you said at the beginning, we hear it was something I kept saying over and over and again, and I had to share that in the book process. But now that the book is out there, what do you hear from the people who read the book, who, who immerse themselves into it? 
Um, a lot of what I hear back is that they didn't realize how important self-care was. A lot of busy moms feel like there's no time in the day for that, but they realize, I say to them, you can't pour for an em from an empty cup. You need to take care of yourself and you need to schedule it. Um, and again, you need to find ways to improve the relationships in your life that mean something to you. You need to um, cut out the toxic relationships in your life, um, improve the way you feel about your career, because that's where you spend the majority of time of your day. Even if you're a stay-at-home mom, that's a career too. So how can you make it the best it can be? Exercise. In the book, we talk about different forms of exercise. You know, how can you mix it up so you don't get bored? Um, understanding the importance of how it affects your life, not just being active for the sake of being active, how it affects your mind, how it affects your skin, um, you know, your emotions and um, your spiritual practice, whatever that is. A lot of people said, oh, you know, I didn't realize that really made a difference when I was reading the book and understanding that your spiritual practice, whatever that is for you, um, you know, just enhancing that and making it grow every day. Um, a lot of people, they don't, they get, it's a, it can be an uncomfortable subject. I've had some people that didn't realize how, how much of an impact it had in their life in either a positive or negative way. Um, but they just hadn't been thinking about, they, you know, may have, I've had a lot of people who grew up the way that their family felt as far as spiritual practice went, and maybe they weren't as aligned with it. And so it can be very powerful. And so, you know, going back into the book and realizing, you know, they're pulling out these different things that they knew deep, deep down that they were having some trouble with, but pulling that out of them and helping them understand how they feel about it and how it, again, affects so many more aspects of their life than just a spiritual practice. So That's beautiful. So, so the book has that profound impact of, of greater awareness and the ability to take the necessary actions that result in the impact in their health and their quality of life. So, and again, that's that's what passionate wellness is. It's that the ability to achieve those results in people's lives. So I, I love that the, the book enables that to take place both in the practice and, and outside um, in the community where people are learning about this for the first time. They, 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 look, they read it and they're like, I've never thought of this. I, I, or maybe I've thought of it, but I've not actioned it. And now the understanding is there. It actually has this ability to change people's lives for the better. So I think mm -hmm. that's such an important part about having an having a book, writing a book and sharing that message. I'd love to just move away from the, the book itself and the impact that it's having to what it has meant for you personally to write a book because, you know, it can grow your practice. Yes, it can give you those positive stories about the impact you're having on people's lives. But what about your self-identity? And again, maybe you haven't reflected on this, and so I'm going to throw this as one of those maybe challenging questions, but I'd love okay. for you to think about okay, you've written a book, you're impacting all of these lives. What do you think about yourself now? How have you changed? What is your perspective um, as an author now a, that maybe it wasn't before you'd written an author and the recognition you have of, of who you've become in that writing process? So I'd love to just get your thoughts about that change process. Well, I think that's actually a really, really great question. Um, for me personally, I, I cannot tell you how much better I have felt about myself because I am an author. It be, it, and I, this is something I talk to my clients about in one of the very first minutes that we sit down, we talk about your childhood. I want to know a little bit about your childhood around food most so I can get a sense of how it was for you growing up because a lot of what you experience in your childhood, as you know, shapes who you are today. Um, I always felt like I was in my sister's shadows. She's my two years younger sister. She is a physician. She was, I always felt she was smarter than me. I always felt she had my parents' att attention more than me. So I kind of grew up with that mindset that um, my voice wasn't one that needed to be heard or, you know, it wasn't important enough to be heard. So writing this book was so powerful for me to know that my words have inspired so many people and hearing my clients so, so that question to me just kind of lights me up because I grew up feeling so sad about not having a voice and would it even matter? And it, it, the book actually inspired me to give talks and I never thought I would do that. But I thought, well, I started with my voice on paper 
And now I want to get my message out because I was getting a positive response from the book and from my clients using the book. So that's what it's meant to me. I found my voice. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for that vulnerability. I know they, these questions can, can unearth um, stories about, as you've done in the past and, and our history and our experiences and our fears, our doubts around students. And so that's just so powerful to, to hear that. And I, I love that you shared that. So I, I'm actually just a little bit blown away by your answer there. So uh, that, <laughs> that took me off guard and that's, 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 so, that's so beautiful. Thank you. The, the fact that you found your voice, you just also highlighted that, you know, you've now doing speaking engagements. So it's, it's also maybe created opportunities as well that month. And you said maybe you weren't thinking that you were going to have speaking opportunities, but how, how has it expanded your world in terms of you've spoken about speaking, but how else has it expanded your world and, and your reach and the ability to share your message? Well, I've been able to get clients through speaking and wellness events, which wasn't something I had thought I would be able to do. I thought there's no way I can do that. Who's well, going to want to hear my message? And then to have people sign up and have people talking and laughing and, and you know, engaging and then bringing their friends. Um, for me, the coaching is, I'm passionate about it because I love to see the transformation that my clients have. I've had several clients that are coming to me telling me they can't be emotional in front of their family. They, you know, they, they have to be strong and they're sobbing through every, every session because they have no one else to be free. And, and I provide a safe place of no judgment. You know, this is where you can be who your internal self wants to be. And I, I think it comes from my childhood feeling like I needed someone to be that someone for me you know, that I could be heard. So, um, you know, I think that it's oh, the, the step of the health coaching to writing the book, to being able to speak at a wellness event and, and just impacting other people's lives and, and getting clients through that. Clients who say, yeah, I didn't realize I was ready for a change, but I think I'm ready for a change. I need to make, bring more positivity to my life. I want to live a long life, you know, and I need to, you know, what are the steps I need to take to do that? So um, I, I talk about with my skincare, um, I don't like the term anti-aging because aging is a gift and a privilege. And I say timeless aging because, you know, you want to look timeless. You want to look like you walk into your high school reunion and they're like, you haven't changed a bit, you know? So that's what you want. And your skin and your gut, they all go together. So Beautiful. I think, um, and you've, you've just you just highlighted again so many like golden nuggets throughout this process that that idea of timeless aging and again sharing that message in that way is such a you, you're pivoting in a way from the traditional message and, and sharing something that allows people to see beyond traditional or even you know marketed concepts so you can actually create paradigm shifts in the mind of your reader you can move them away from thought patterns that are maybe counterproductive to new insights and new understanding that allow them to alter the direction of their life. So uh, and this is more of a clinical question than a book question, but I'd love your thoughts about this. How, how do you deliberately work with the client to shift their understanding, to change their paradigm or their perspective so that they can move in the direction of claiming their power and their health? So uh, there's one exercise that I do do with every client. Uh, well, this is one of two, but in that, uh, there's a, that, that internal voice inside your head is very, very loud. And I don't think a lot of times people realize how, how much it is going on every day, what they're hearing. So in order to shift the positive mindset, we, we sit down and we, in a session, we'll write down what are some negative things you tell yourself during the day. And then we create, an, right across on the side of it, we create an opposite positive phrase to replace that negative phrase. And we pick the top three, um, and then we, we kind of talk about what, which, which the voice is being the loudest about and how we can reset that and, and shift to their, they come up with their own like four or five word sentence to replace that negative voice. And we work to, each time you catch yourself, don't be hard on yourself, but just immediately replace it with the, the little phrase that you, the positive phrase that you were going to say instead. So that's how we try to shift the way of thinking into a more positive mindset, because that is the most powerful thing you can have for a journey towards wellness. 
Um, and then we talk about what is an, an affirmation you can say to yourself, you know, at the end of the day, when you lay your head down at the pillow, what are, what are your three things that you're grateful for, for that day? Always trying to, to, to look at life through a positive lens. It's beautiful and powerful. I think it lends to also just as we'll come towards the end of this interview because again, we made your time so valuable. I appreciate what you've already shared, but I want this last series of questions just to drive at the point of the practitioner claiming their power. So, so many practitioners, maybe like you said right at the beginning, you didn't feel like you had the voice or that you would um, feel like you could do that. Many practitioners also feel the same way that they maybe they, they can't write, they, you know, up in their head, they've got this internal voice that I'm not a good writer, I, I could never speak on a stage and they have all these limiting beliefs or self-doubts um, or uncertainty in their capacity to share a, a compelling message. So that point you've got, you've just shared, again, ties in perfectly to that, you know, changing that inner voice. Did you have any doubts or uncertainties? I mean, you spoke about not having a voice, but when you got to the point saying, I'm going to write, what roadblocks did you find? and what internal voice did you hear that you had to have silence? Well, I did have a bit of a writer's block, right? In the beginning, after I created the outline, um, I started on the, the opening in the first chapter and then I'm like, well, I started second guessing myself. And one of my mentors said, move past perfectionism and just get it done. Um, there's two things that I did to get past the writer's block. Um, she told me to have a five by seven empty picture frame sitting on my desk by my computer where I write. She said, commit every day to like hypothetically filling that frame with words. So envision that on your computer, type just that amount of words for each day and always do it before 11 because as the day goes on, we put off things later and later in the day, we procrastinate more. So do the thing you're, that's hardest for you before 11 a.m. So I would do that. I would commit to do that. And there would be days where I would struggle to try to fill that frame. And there'd be days I'd go p far past it. So that was one thing that really helped me. Um, I think getting an outline of what you would like to write a book about is very helpful to kind of see the direction you want to take. Um, there's a lot of different writing, writer's prompts, too, that help you kind of pull from being stuck and get the creative mind going. One thing that really helped me was when I did feel stuck as a mom of four girls, I was like, okay, maybe I should just write a children's book. May, I was starting to doubt myself. I'm like, maybe I should just put this aside for a little bit and just write a children's book. And it, it was just it. It, it's something I've always actually wanted to do was to write a children's book. I, I felt like I had a very creative mindset when I was younger. Um, and so I did that. So I kind of shifted the focus to that. I finished the children's book. It was such an inspiration and it gave me what I needed to get back into finishing my book. It gave me the motivation and the inspiration to, to do that. But there's definitely a ton of different tips for writers out there, aspiring writers. I just say, would say to anyone who, if you're thinking about it, if you, if this is something you've ever had a glimmer of a thought about, go for it. You cannot know how accomplished you will feel when you complete. Just an amazing feeling. That's beautiful. And in fact, that, my last question was going to be, what would your message be um, to any of the aspiring authors out there? And you've just, you've just nailed that. You're not, you're going to feel so accomplished doing it, but just do it. So. Is there any final message that you would like to be able to share with people about the importance of the book, the impact that a book has on your practice, on the community? Uh, just a, a lovely conclusive statement to, to share, you know, what it has meant for you to be a writer and what it could mean for someone else. Yeah, I would just say, if you have a dream, go for it. You know, push past being uncomfortable, push past perfectionism and just get it done. Yeah. You will be able to impact other people's lives you will, make, you will feel so amazed about yourself and what it brings to your life. You know, you writing this book, whatever your message is that you want to bring to people, you might be surprised how, how it speaks to you as well, even though they're your words. So, you know, I would say, again, to anyone who's thinking about writing a book, 100% go for it and, and follow that dream and make it a reality. Abby Mason, you are not just an amazing writer and speaker, 
and Hila, you're an incredible person with a profound and powerful message. Thank you for your time. Thank you for being here with us today. And thanks for all that you've done for the world with the, the, the message that you've shared. Thank you so much for having me. I really, really enjoyed it. You're welcome.